Hi, I'm Pavel Spechalski and today let's talk about the GPS. GPS or rather the global navigation satellite systems of which GPS is only one of the elements of this worldwide system. Because we have a GPS, we have the Galileo, we have the GLONASS and also the Asiatic uh, satellite navigation systems that here in the Europe are not maybe the very popular, but still they exist. However, over the last 30 years, we kind of learned if we are talking about the global navigation system to use the shortcut GPS. Okay, but this is not really a topic for today. Over the years, we learned that wherever we want to know where exactly we are, we just take our smartphone or any other device, maybe even such a small GPS, GNSS actually, receiver, connect this to someone, something, launch some kind of the software on our smartphone and we exactly know where we are. However, how many of you know exactly or at least in a good enough approximation how the global navigation systems are really working? What are the satellites are transmitting? What receivers are receiving? And how the hell the receiver knows where it is? So today we will take a short, very short, actually very short, course in the layman terms of how exactly basically all global navigation satellite systems are working. Bear in mind this will be a huge oversimplification of some of the aspects of it. I will explain to you in general how this is working, know in details what every message transmitted by all the satellites means and how you should decode it, but you really should not decode it. So let's go. This is the most abstract, probably the most abstract view on how GPS is working. We have the actor, the blue person I drew over there. We have a bunch of satellites and the satellites are transmitting something. And based on this magical information, the receiver does some internal magic and throws out the position and altitude and all the useful information that we can get from any GPS-like systems. But what exactly the satellites are transmitting? If, for example, the satellites were transmitting the actual distance between this satellite to the receiver, but they don't because it's almost virtually impossible for something like that, then our task would be super simple. Because if we would know exact distance between the receiver and each of the satellites, as well as the position on, of each of the satellites in the sky, with relatively simple mathematical or geographical or however we're gonna call this knowledge and some basic equations we would be able to compute our positions let's say we have two satellites the blue one and the red one and the we know that we are 18 units of distance from the blue satellites and 20 units of distance from the red satellites if we draw two circles with the radius of 20 and 18, then that means if this equation is to be true, then we are either on the inter on one of the intersections between those two circles. And then if we just put this into 2D world with the known positions of the satellites, we would know that this is somewhere where we are. Where exactly this is a different story because this equation has exactly two solutions, not what we need. This is why, but if we add the third satellite and with a known position, of course, and one more time drew a circle, then there should be only one point where we would be located and our solution is, uh, our problem is solved. We know our position and altitude and almost everything else that we would want to know. However, however, the problem is that the satellites are not transmitting any distance to any of the receivers. Why? Because the satellites are 
on the data coming out of the satellites is one way only it's passive the receivers are 100 percent passive and only information that they can get from the satellites is the sats position which is called the almanac plus ephemerides for some exact information so that the receiver can compute the very exact position of every of the satellites of the constellation and the current synchronized time the time in the new versions of the protocol it's not exactly time but close enough time trans exactly the same time transmitted by all the satellites simultaneously so in the very same moment all the satellites are transmitting exactly the same time but how that helps us to get to the to solve the problem of the position in the on the ground that's interesting problem here comes the physics and the physics says that light and all the radio waves in the void very important in the void are propagated with the speed of 300 thousands kilometers per second that means that in one second the radio wave travels approximately 300 thousand kilometers of course this is not always exactly true because there are things that can affect the speed of the light and also speed of the radio waves but this is not really important but let's remember 300,000 kilometers per second if one satellite the black box on this on this on the screen is transmitting a time and the time when we get it at the receiver is 8 30 a.m this piece of information gives us absolutely nothing we only can guess that when the satellite transmitted the time it's not really like 8 30 when we received because the radio wave had to take some time to travel from the satellite to the receiver but when we will add the second uh, second satellite to the mix and the times transmitted by both of the satellites are not exactly the same but the second satellite the signal from the second satellite says that it's 831 we have one second of the difference what does it tell us well besides the fact that the times receive timestamps received by both of the satellites are not exactly the same we can assume that we are actually 300 thousand kilometers closer to the satellite on the left than to the satellite of the right because the radio wave took one second longer to get from the satellites to the receiver and in the 2d space let's just forget that hate exists for a moment that means that we are somewhere on the line here the gray line that in every point of this line we are 300 000 kilometer closer to the satellite on the left than to the satellite on the right well but this is one more time not what we really wanted to get because because the fact that we are on the line somewhere in space is not what we would like to get from the positioning system so but what happens when we have the third satellite and this third satellite says that no no, no it's not 831 but it's 832 that means that we are not 300,000 but 600,000 closer to the satellite on the left than to the satellite on the right because the radio waves took two seconds longer to travel from the satellite on the left than on the satellite on the right we know that we are one second apart 300,000 kilometers apart from the 
second satellite to the third satellites and still that the first and second is one more time 300,000 kilometers apart. And when we draw more, line on our, more lines on our screen, we will notice that, well, now we have three lines and those three lines are intersecting somewhere on our 2D space somewhere. Uh, they are not really intersecting exactly in the same spot because there are small disturbances in the propagations and the time signal itself is not really that much of the precise. But the more satellites we will be able to track on the sky while knowing when the satellite is and how much time comparing to the different satellite the signal took to arrive on the receiver, we will know our position more and more precisely because it will be somewhere between the place where all the lines intersect. Of course, if we want to know, if we want to have this working in the 3D space, not in the 2D space, to really to have a good lock or at least some kind of the lock with the information about the position and altitude, we need, let's say, around four satellites. But with the 2D space, two actually might even be enough in some of the cases. And this, my friends, is probably the simplest way I can explain how the GPS and all the other of the global navigation satellite systems are working. It's all about the time and the difference of the reception of the time between different satellites. But this is... Uh, this was a great simplification of the problem. In practice, this is much more complicated because A, the orbits on which the satellites are are decaying from time to time. So the information about the exact positions of the of the systems of the satellites has to be updated. New satellites are coming into the sky. Old satellites are required. The state of the ionosphere can affect the time that the radio signal from the satellite gets to reach to the receiver and so on and so on and so on. So all this information is required to be added to one of the signals of the satellites for the receiver to be able to get the good lock and be able to track the satellites. But if we only are interested in the very simplified model, this is more or less almost like it's working in the real life. Almost. Almost, almost, almost. Maybe in a week or two, I be a well, month or two, depends on, on the time, I will record a second video in the series when we will talk more in deep about the problems and the kinds of the signal transmitted with the, with the GPS. For example, do you know what's the difference between cold, warm and hot start of the receiver? Yeah another set of completely different different problems but for today it's all thank you very much for watching and until the next one bye bye